after five long years, we have finally won the Conference North. And now, let's go and have a look at how we did it with our Season 5 review in today's episode of Walks to the Prem. Hello guys, it's me, Bad Jokes, back at you once again with another video. And today guys, we have got episode number 35 of my Kingsland Walks to Prem save here on Football Manager 2020. And yet after five long years, we have finally got out of the Conference North. We have won it. We are going up to the National League next season. We will be competing in the highest league Kingsley have ever competed in in their history. So really can't wait for that. I've just played the last two games of the season off camera. So today we're going to be doing a Season 5 review. Going back over the tactics we've used. See who's won the end of season awards. And let's have a look at the finances because they are in the toilet people. Yeah, we're looking at that. We're looking at our transfer plans for next season. And the tactics we have been using this year. So, first things first. Let's get into it. Let's go club vision. And no, not, not club vision. What am I saying? Let's go schedule. And so, last two games of this season. First of which was a 3-1 win versus Barrow. Embala with a couple of goals. Mundell with the other one there. And then last one of the season against second place Chester. It was a 2-2 draw. Very back and forth game. They took the lead. We equalised. They retook the lead. We equalised once again. So yeah, very good back and forth game there. And so that means that we finished the season on 99 points. One sort of what would have been a very magical 100 points. But we finished the season with 30 league wins. 30! That is a lot of games to be winning in one season. We drew 9, lost 7, scored 87. We got outscored by 1, 2, 3 teams there. So... We didn't score the most goals, but we did get the most wins. But we did concede the second fewest amount of goals in the league. I think that is. Can I sort that? Yes, I can. Yep, yeah, second fewest amount of goals we conceded. But we did have the best goal difference by, what's that, five goals? So, a little bit of a gap there. So, we did have a very, very good season overall and now let's go back my position and yep that is all sorted and so let's have a look at our tactics if we go back on the schedule first you will see that it has been 4-4-1-1 pretty much all season and indeed all season we have used the very same tactic and so that tactic looks like this 4-4-1-1, very nice, very solid. I really like it because, like I say, it makes us solid. It makes us compact because if we have a look at our lines, we've got a standard line of engagement and a standard defensive line. And having Marriott up top on his own really has been helping out Romain Mundell because if we have a look, at Romain Mundell, he's finished the season on a 7.18 average rating. And he has got 17 goals from just behind Marriott. Because what tends to happen is that Marriott will go that way and take a defender or two with him. And then Mundell tends to go that way and gets himself into space. So I really like how that's working. That's giving Mundell a very, very great great amount of space to get himself all those 17 goals and if we do have a look at the main man Marriott 41 goals in total this season is that as many as last season it's three it's three less than last season five four less sorry than the season before that but a whole lot better than that season 
And so still to get 41 goals in a season and to do that three seasons on the spin, the man is an absolute legend. And oh yeah, that's the other thing. I've given him a new contract because obviously he was only on a one season deal. But he's asked to be a scout as well. So I'm hoping that's him not saying he wants to retire at the end of the season. Because I would love to see him at the um, in the National League. I would love to see what he can do up there. And so if you have a look at his happiness, he doesn't have any long term plans. It's not saying anything there about him wanting to retire. So hopefully we're getting at least one season out of him in the National League. That would be very cool to see. And then as well, what I like about this tactic is that it does encourage Embala and Wright Phillips to cut inside. I know I've got them just as wingers, but Embala has had a quite decent season this year. He has got himself nine goals all in total. So he has completely outperformed last year. What was going on with him last year, I don't know. But he's come back this year. He's got only a few less goals than what he managed two years ago. So he's going to be another one who's going to be interesting to see in the National League. How old is he now? He's 31. Might only get the one season in the National League. He has got okay physicals. His stamina isn't the best. That might affect him. Because if I'm right, the National League has... Does it, have, does it have more games or does it have the same amount of games as the league we've just been in? Uh, 24 teams in that one. And then National League, let's go stages. This really is showing my lack of knowledge of non-league football. And so, yeah, 24 teams, so the same amount of games. So, yeah, stamina might be an issue for Mbala. Where's the tactics gone? There we go. And so, yeah, Mbala... It's going to be interesting to see how he gets on next season. And DiMaggio White-Phillips, I was going to say Sean. I'm so used to saying Sean White-Phillips. But nope, it is his son, DiMaggio. 22 years old. He has been an absolute beast this season. 13 goals he has got for us. I can't wait for the game to trickle over to when he's only got a month left on his deal. Because as soon as that happens, I am going to throw all the monies at him. Whatever money it's going to take to get him, I am going to try and chuck it all at him. See if we can get him to stay. And actually, what might help is if I am on his favoured personnel, which I am. Yes, that is a very good sign that we might be able to keep him. And it says here, wants to commit his future to the club. Yes. Go on, DiMaggio. That looks like we might be able to keep him, which would be very, very cool. And so anyway, back to the tactic. Like I say there, we, we play fairly wide, so we're not out completely wide. So the wingers do tend to come inside and to help with a bit of an overload. Turns it into a bit of a 4-2-3-1 when we're attacking. And so, focus through the middle because we have got two very good central midfielders. And again, that drags everybody in. And then work the ball into the box. So, we're passing the ball through to Mundell or Adam Marriott up top. And so, yeah, that is working very, very well. Sort of passing again. So, it helps with the working the ball into the box. Standard tempo, so we're not rushing and running at 100 mile an hour and getting everybody knackered. And then dribble less, just so again that encourages the passing. Be more disciplined, so it's they fit in more with the tactic. And so in transition, we have got our goalkeeper throwing the ball long to one of our playmakers in the centre of the midfield. We're countering when the ball's been won, but when we're losing it, we're regrouping so we can be hard to break down. But we are getting the keeper to distribute the ball very quickly, again, to help set up counter-attacks. And then out of possession, we've already looked at the lines. We are using a offside trap as well, which 
It's working a bit. We've been caught out a few times, but not too much, I think. So, yeah, I'm very happy with that. We are pressing extremely urgently. Again, this is all to help with the counter-attacks. And then we're staying on our feet in a tackle. So we're not diving in like we're 1993 version of Julian Dix and getting everyone sent off. So, yep, yeah, that is my tactic. And I think it's worked quite well over the last few seasons. We would have gone up two seasons ago if we had the squad we have now. Because the squad we have now are not bottle jobs like the one we had a couple years back. So, yeah, I really, really like this squad. And let's go back on the tactics. And, yeah, our two central midfielders, Callum McCarthy. First thing to say is these faces from Laura, these faces from Chilled Moose, just, oh, beautiful. But you can see his stats here. They are also quite gorgeous. 53 appearances, 2 goals, 11 assists, 2 man the matches, 7.18 average rating for the whole season. He's a man I am loving having here. I think I've just given him a new contract. Yes, I have. He's now on 800 quid a week for the next two years. But yeah, he has definitely, definitely earned that new deal. And then alongside him, it's been Xavier Simmons who is 21 years old. I think we got him from Norwich as well. As, oh, one second, I'm about to sneeze. One second, people. No, apparently not. Okay. And so, no, we got Simmons off Chelsea. We've had him for three years. And this season, he has played only the 21 games. He's had 17 sub-appearances as well. He's been competing for the starting position, along with Diaz Wright. I know they was alongside each other last season. And so they've been more competing this year with McCarthy coming in and really dominating his position. And so he scored four goals, two assists, seven yellow cards. That might be something to have a look at. And an average rating of 6.89. So not the best, but he's been solid. And if you have a look at Diaz right as well, where is he? He's not on the bench. There he is. He has played 33 games this season, 10 sub-appearances, 8 goals, 4 penalties he's scored. Does that mean he's scored 3? Oh no, he's taken 4, scored 3. I think that means 6 assists and he's got an average rating of 6.99. And so, yep, you can see here, we're starting to get some players that have been here for a few years who start to really know the club. So we're starting to build a bit of a bit of a not club vision, what is it? A bit of an identity at the club. That is the word I am looking for. And so again, it's gonna be interesting to see how he can do up in the National League. He's twenty six years old, so he's getting into his prime now. And then we've looked at DiMaggio, and then let's have a look at the fellow in goal, Anthony Herbin, twenty four year old Frenchman. He has played in 54 games this season, which I think is every game we've played. I could be wrong on that, but that feels right. So, 54 appearances, 47 goals conceded, 28 clean seats, with an average rating of 6.91. The man has been an absolute star. And I've just given him another new contract, another one-year deal, 600 and. £75 a week. So, yeah, he's on a decent amount of money there. I'm very happy we've got him. He has been very, very solid this year. And then, on the left-hand side, we have got Sam Habergem, who has played 28 times for us this season. I think that's since he joined us, because I think we got him in halfway through the season. Did we? No, we didn't. We got him in the summer. Okay. But yeah, he, we got him in the summer. We've got him on loan, actually. His contract with Southend is also coming to an end. Did not realise we had him on loan. Completely forgot about that. And so he's played 28 games, 7 assists, 2 yellow cards, 7.09 for an overall rating for the season. And I'm very happy with that. 
As, an, as a matter of fact, I'm going to add him to my shortlist so I don't forget. And then again, he's going to be another one we're going to be offering a contract to when that option becomes available to us. And then our two central defenders, Stephen Hopkins, three-star current, four-star potential ability, still only 20 years old. We have had him for two years now on loan from Cholton. And so, is his contract coming up with him? No, it's not. He's got another year with them. But, if we've had him for two years, surely Cholton wouldn't mind us having him for another year. But let's see if I can make an offer now. And, yeah, they don't mind. So, 450 quid a week. Let's go suggest that. And so, that should be our first bit of transfer business done for next season. So, that was very nice. And then Andrew Young, uh, 20 years old, 3-star current, 3.5-star potential ability. He has played 21 times this year, as our defensive pairings have been mixed and matched all season. And so, yep, he's been competing with a couple of others. He's got 21 appearances, just the one goal and the one assist, but 7.08 average rating. I'm very happy with that. We picked him up initially from Loki's old team, Cardiff Met Uni. So, yeah, very happy with that particular bit of business we did a couple of years ago. And how's his contract looking? We've got him for another season. We have just signed him to another deal. And on only £400 a week. I think that's a bit of a bargain for how good Andrew Young has been this season. And so, finish this up. We've got Dylan Crow on the right hand side. And so he has played 42 times this season. 34 games in the league. And he scored no goals. He's got three assists. But an average rating of 7.05. We've got him on loan from Ipswich. Can we get him back? His contract is coming up with them. So again, he's another one we're going to be shortlisting. Because, as well, with us winning the league, I want to try and give most, if not all, of this team a chance to impress in the league above. Because I do think a nice, settled team that knows your tactic should be helpful. If you've had any experience of doing anything like this, of going up and keeping most of your team with you, please let me know how it's gone down below. Because I've not really got promoted too much in the last few years. So I would like to know how, how, it, how it works if you do keep your team. And so, yep, yeah, that is Dylan Crow hoping to keep him. And so let's do this on the squad screen. And let's go by average ratings. And so where are we? Here we go. Adam Marriott, unsurprisingly, with the highest average rating... DiMaggio Wright-Phillips coming second. Mbala is third. And Andrew Unpronounceable, who we have not looked at, I don't think. He's played 30 games this season. Two goals, one assist, one man the match. Average rating of 7.22. And so, is he another one whose contract is coming up? Nope, I've just given him a new deal for a couple of seasons. So, that is very nice to see. And so, anyone else who we haven't looked at yet? Nope, I think we've looked at everyone else who's got a pretty decent average rating. And so, let's do this by a, let's do this by position. And let's see where we might be looking weak. Actually, I know what. Team report. Let's go squad depth. Let's see where our assistant manager thinks we are looking weakest. He thinks we're looking weakest on the left-hand side. Oh, didn't mean to press that. And so, come on. Oh, there we go. And yep, so he thinks we're weakest on the left-hand side. And I kind of agree with him. We've got a load of trialists in as well. These are the fellas you can see in red. We've got a load of trialists that we're looking at to try and bring in maybe for next season. And so, yeah, he only rates Mbala at one and a half star. Got to say... I don't agree with you, Nick, there, my my good mate. So, but maybe, maybe he's right for, like, a backup on the left-hand side. 
we need something there. And then as far as fullback, yeah, I can sort of agree with him there. I think we do need something on the left-hand side. Centre-back, I think we're okay. If we can keep Hopkins and then maybe get a couple more backup options that we're maybe not paying for next season, I'd be happy with that. And then right-hand side, we definitely need to try and keep Crow. Crow, we did just have a look at him. Is his contract up? Yeah. And am I on his favourite personnel? Let's have a look. Yeah, I am. And Thierry, he's got Thierry Henry as a favourite personnel because, because that's his idol. What's Henry doing in this save? He's managing Seville. Okay. Oh, I'm going on a bit of a tangent here, but when, when did he join them? He joined them in 2023. So he's had pretty much this whole season to do something with them. And so let's see, how has he got on? Ninth. <laughs> okay. And now, before I go on too much of a tangent, oh, actually, if you would like to see how the world's looking after five years in this save, let me know down below, and I'll do a bonus video and release it some point in the next week so you can see how things are looking in the next in the first five years of the save with regards to top leagues, the Champions League, and all that sort of good stuff. And so, yeah, I'm on Dylan Crow's favourite personnel. So that should help us keep him in the club. And so, anywhere else, I think we're looking weak. A backup keeper. We've only got the one keeper in the club. So we definitely, definitely need a backup goalkeeper over the summer. So, basically, main transfer plans is a left winger a left fullback and yes basically left wing fullbacks and a backup keeper and I think if we can get that and maybe some backup central defenders as well I think if we can do that we should be okay to survive next season in the National League and so next thing we want to have a look at is the finances and I'm almost scared to show you this uh, I think you'll remember Start of the season, we had over a million pounds in the bank. Like, where's that? 1.14 million. Well, that's in that's in 2021. Where, where is recently? So I'm guessing like there is fairly recently. So 653k we had, and now it's gone all the way down to 140,000 pounds. We are losing money at an exponential rate. And have a look at the have a look at the projections. I'm hoping when the season overlaps to next year, I'm hoping these projections are gonna change because they don't look good. 1.3 million in debt by the end of next season, 2 million in debt by the end of the season after that. And so to combat that. I have already tried to organise some uh, friendlies for next season. Uh, I can't see them here, but our calendar. Can I show you them on there? May, June, July. Nope. Okay. Well, I have to, I have tried to organise some more money leagues. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully they will help bring in some money. I did do some at the start of this season, but they did not help with finances at all. So, yeah, we really need them to work next season. And so, what's the next thing we want to have a look at? The dynamics. Like I say, I've got my list here. I've got my list here, so I don't forget anything that I want to talk about. And so, dynamics. Team cohesion, very good. Dressing room atmosphere is excellent. Managerial support is excellent. Let's have a look at the social groups. And you can see there, we've only got the two groups. We have got a core social group, and we've got a secondary one here. Quite surprising how Adam Marriott is not in the core social group. And Embala. Oh, and Mundell. So, three, our three main players, well, four if you count the keeper, they're not in the main social group. That's a little bit surprising to me. Hmm. Okay, 
And let's have a look at the hierarchy. You can see here, we've got Diaz White, the captain, Marriott and Mundell as the team leaders. That's really nice to see Mundell as the team leader. And because he's only 21 years old, what is his leadership like? Free. Can I send him on a leadership course? Yes, I can. Let's see if the club will let us. Nope, they're not going to let us. But that's something I'm going to look into. If we can get his leadership up over the next few years, he could be a uh, captain in, in the making, possibly. And so, in the highly influ influential players, we've got Mbala, we've got Simmons, and we've got Herbin. How old's Herbin again? 24 years old. Decent leadership. He could be a captain as well in the making. And so, I'm nervous about this bit. I'm, no, I'm nervous about this bit. Let's go and see who supports me. Oh. Oh. That's very nice to see. Every single one of them supports me. Oh my days, that is nice to see. Yes. I've got a strong relationship with a number of players and my performance is having a positive effect. Well, that's very nice to see. And let's just see what my assistants got as feedback for this. Uh, Diaz Wright, Marriott and Mundell are well established within the squad. They've been here for a long time and they have a good understanding of the culture. So that's very nice to see. Diaz Wright is approaching the peak of his career. And so we should be looking to retain him and his leadership skills. Okay, but only one yellow bit. And that's something I have already mentioned that I'm worried about. One of the team leaders, Adam Marriott, is approaching the end of his career. But if he retires soon, we should be able to cope due to having two other leaders. So that's very nice to see. So not a whole lot to worry about really there. And so here we go. It's the moment you've all been waiting for. The end of season awards. The Kingsley best overall 11 squad for the first five years of the save looks like this. It's Anthony Herbin in goal. Tyreek Wilson, who's now at Wrexham, is the left-back. Hopkins and Smith is the centre-back pairing. A little bit surprising that it's Smith. I would have thought that maybe it would have been Andrew Unpronounceable or Andrew Young, who maybe would have been alongside Hopkins, but apparently not. And on the right-hand side, it's Jordan Richards, who is coming at right back there. And then in the midfield, it's David Mbala on the left, Simmons and right in the middle, and George Brown is in on the right-hand side. I would have expected White Phillips to get in there with what a good season White Phillips has had this season. But George Brown apparently has a better average rating than him. And then up top, it is no surprise as it is Romain Mundell and Adam Marriott. And now, the end of season awards. The fans player of this season is none other than the one and only Adam Marriott. With 35% of the vote. David Mbala came second. DiMaggio came third. And then goal of the season is Diaz right? Let's have a look at that right now. As oh no, I can't. Okay, why can't I have a look at that? Oh, okay. Well, we're not gonna be having a butchers at that. But signing of the season is Andrew Unpronounceable, and young player of the season is DiMaggio Wright Phillips. So that is your end of season awards. Let's have a look at the stats. Top goal scorer, obviously Marriott with 41 goals. Highest average rating, we've already seen that, is Adam Marriott. And then most assists is David Mbala with 20. Diaz Wright with an 85% pass completion. I think that's quite impressive. Marriott with the most man of the matches. 
Andrew Unpronounceable with the most yellow cards and joint worst discipline for getting one red card alongside Tommy Smith. And so that is the stats. And let's have a look at the season review. We was expected to be in the running for a playoff place, but performed even better than expected. And so, yep, yeah, very good there. We lost in the first round of the FA Cup versus Barnsley. We lost in the Challenge Trophy to Yeovil in the second round. And our stadium, only 8% full. We need to get that up. Hopefully, being in a higher league will mean we'll get more people to come and watch us. And so, club vision and expectations meeting uh, for next season or for the next five years. Work within the wage budget, obviously. We have been doing that. And uh, next season, they want top half. Oh, that could be difficult. And that's a four-level requirement. So, wowzers, that could be difficult. Our contract ends at the end of next season, but as ever, I'm hoping to get a good run of four, five, six games without losing. The board love me, so they will just give me a new contract whenever I want it. And then for the season after that, they want us to be, to be aiming for the playoffs, and then they want us to definitely reach it in the 26-27 season, but that's all they want for the next few years. And so, top half next season. I think that could be difficult. And there's the dynamics. We've already had a look at that. Team meeting. Let's do that very quickly. Let's see. Let's go passionate. And uh, what do I want to say here? Um, congratulations on achieving promotion. Uh, I believe we can avoid getting involved in the relegation battle. Or we have to focus on solidifying our position. Uh, let's go for that. The board seem to think we can get top half. So let's see what they think about this. Yes! Right answer. Everybody's happy with that. That's exactly the sort of overall reaction I was after. And yet everybody's happy. And so uh, injury report. We've not had that many injuries. Which has been very, very nice. And then end of season break. And then that's just the post-match analysis for the Chester game. And so, let's have a look at how much money we've got to spend for next season as well. Before we go, we have got £34,000 in the transfer budget. And we've got all seven, almost £8,000 in the ways budget. So, yep, that's very nice. Decent amount of money to spend there. And so, guys, I think I have kept you guys for long enough. First up, prediction for next season. Before we make any transfers, I am going to guess... Let's have a look at the National League. What sort of teams have we got in that league? Uh, with this, um, Barnet. It'd be cool, to, be cool to play Barnet. They were one of the first teams... I ever used to manage on any on any sort of football ma management game. So Barnet, Yeovil, Dagenham and Redbridge, awesome. Boston again, if they don't go up. Bromley, York, Solihull Moors, okay. Uh, 16th. 16th, I'm going to say. Do I want to say 16th? Uh, halfway is 12. 14th. 14th, that is my prediction. We're going to finish 14th next season. And so, guys, if you've enjoyed this video, please pop a massive thumbs up down below. I know it's been a long one. Thank you very much if you've made it through the whole video. Let me know down below if you have made it all the way through to the end. I would really appreciate that. And so, yeah, follow me on Twitter, at Bad Jokes Gaming. Subscribe to the channel for more FM20 content, more Pro Evo 20 content, and a whole lot of other good stuff in the future. And as well as that, subscribe or follow all the Passion for FM lads. All their details are down below. And check out the Passion for FM Discord, the website, the Twitter, the Facebook, all of that good stuff. Check all that stuff out down below. 
And yep, I shall see you tomorrow for the India series. I shall see you then. Bye.